And let us now welcome Jerry's a day. He's the VP Global Channel Sales at Nexus. Jerry's brings nearly a decade of experience leading merchants and development agencies around infrastructure and cloud computing technical strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry's. Thank you. Uh, typically hosting infrastructures is not the very first thing that we talk to merchants about. We work a lot with agencies like DC Cap and others, and usually the last thing that that a, a merchant is, is considering is hosting costs, budget, architecture, preparedness, holiday readiness. Uh, typically, it's it's not high on the priority scale. So I'll I'll try and make it exciting. Uh, if I don't, uh, just sort of make a signal, like it's not going well, let me know. Or uh, if you want to catch up on your emails, uh, I won't be offended. Uh, my name is uh, Jerry's Ida. Everybody calls me Jerry. Yeah, even my mom. So if you see me around, please feel free to call me Jerry. Uh, like, uh, like our MC said, I've been around the hosting space for nearly a decade. And uh, a lot of what I've done is, is work with merchants, work with agencies, help them understand what we do, how we can help their business. And, and really the, the thing that resonates most with folks is that you have people behind you, people backing you up. Uh, you can find great technology, the latest and greatest, really, anywhere. Uh, most companies will, will tell you they're the best at, at what they do. And, and quite frankly, they are all the best. Uh, but it's, it's really the, the people behind that, that technology. So uh, uh, let me talk a little bit about or do a little history, probably not as deep as, as Mark. I, I really enjoyed his uh, presentation earlier. Uh, I'm a bit of a history buff, uh, but I don't, I don't have a compelling story like, like he, he does. Uh, but I do remember watching television as a kid. Uh, I don't know about a lot of you here, but I grew up in a small family business and, and all of my television was like on a black and white TV and I'm not that old, I'm, I'm really, uh, on a black and white TV in the back of the family grocery store to sort of kill in time while, while my mom and dad were working. So how many of you can remember watching TV where you only had two, four, six, maybe three, five channels, something like that? Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, you guys don't look that old either, so I don't, I don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, so there, we all go through this evolution. Uh, every, every industry, every, every, uh, uh, really every, every company that I've worked with, the, we see this evolution in our industry, in the hosting space, in the software licensing space, and, and things get a little more curated as, as they evolve year over year, maybe every two years, we kind of see an evolution in the hosting space. So you go from a few channels to uh, communities. You see the MTV uh, generation or, or things like CNN popping up where it's dedicated to a specific audience or, or Fox News nowadays, which is dedicated to a very specific audience. Um, and, and then we go like hyper content curation to today, uh, where now there's so much data on, on what you watch, it's creepy how they can really nail down your personality and what you're really into. Uh, and so much so that they, they are delivering content for you, which uh, I enjoy it. I mean, it, it makes, you know, finding a, your favorite, new favorite series to, to dig into on a five hour plane ride across the country. Uh, makes it a lot enjoyable, a lot more enjoyable, a lot easier. Uh, and and uh, um, we are going to continue to see this sort of evolution uh, in our industry and, and, and others. Anybody remember using a floppy disk? Can you imagine somebody using a floppy disk today? It happens. Some, some habits are die hard. Uh, anybody familiar with this story? The U.S. military just stopped using floppy disks for like nuclear launch and deployments like last month. It, it's, it's really startling to, to see. So uh, everybody goes through these sort of evolutions, but in this case, some, some move slow, slower than others. 
what are we here to talk about? Some uh, evolution hosting is, is where I started. Uh, when I started almost nine years ago at Nexus, I was selling shared and dedicated servers. That's literally bare metal hardware. That was before anybody mentioned the word cloud. And then after the word cloud was mentioned, the CEO of my company tried to convince me for two years that cloud is a fad and it's going away. He was wrong. Uh, we do have a cloud product now. Uh, so how do things grow? What we, we still do at Nexus is we, we have a cloud product, but yet we still work in the bare metal space. And the reason we do that is because like the US military, it's a tried, tested solution. Uh, it, it's probably not the most attractive thing uh, or, or sexiest topic to talk about, bare metal hardware, but it works well for a majority of the merchants that, that we work with. Uh, not to say that cloud technology isn't the future, because it, it certainly is, uh, but there are certain, um, certain benefits to have from, from something that uh, really has been used for, for decades now. So typically when you think of cloud, what do you, what do you know a cloud infrastructure to be? Can, can somebody really raise your hand if you can, in five, you don't have to do it, but in, in one sentence really explain what a cloud architecture looks like or, or what it is to somebody that doesn't understand. <clears throat> I always think of the new uh, uh, Creed movie when, uh, uh, I can't remember the character's name, but he's trying to explain to Rocky Balboa that like, hey, it's in the cloud and he's talking about his iTunes or, or his images and, and he just looks up in the sky and he's like, I don't understand, I don't get it. Uh, but uh, in this case, when, when it comes to cloud architecture, it's really the, the resources that are maintaining your site. It's no different than uh, that bare metal infrastructure that, that we still work with every day. Uh, a lot of that has just been virtualized across multiple machines so that you're not limited by the bounds of a single dedicated box, but that you have an entire architecture that's, that's accommodating your site. Maybe you don't necessarily need to use it, uh, but uh, there, there are certain um, abilities to expand and retract as, as needed. Uh, so the, the general rule is, is really divide, divide and conquer is, is what we see in the hosting space. Oh, that was off. That deck was out of order, but so traditional hosting versus serverless. How many people have heard the term serverless? How is it possible to have an architecture that has no servers? Uh, I first time I read this was in a Google article. Uh, they sort of coined the term serverless, and I laughed at it, much like the CEO of my company who laughed at cloud. Uh, but uh, I, I learned that there's, there's maybe some real value in what they're, they're talking about here. In terms of a cloud architecture, you have an array of servers within one data center or multiple data centers that are accommodating your site or, or the application itself. Uh, in this case, you're sort of breaking things down a little further. The basic LAMP stack environment is then uh, working with a combination of uh, architecture, hardware, and different application services to uh, really get, narrow down what needs to be scaled, what needs to grow in certain areas when traffic uh, grows. Uh, do you need to necessarily grow the web application architecture? Not really, maybe you just need additional PHP instances on the architecture side. Uh, so generally speaking, serverless architecture, it is real and, and there's some, some real facts behind it and, and some, uh, real value in the architecture and the design of it, uh, but it, it really is not not that far removed from uh, cloud architecture and and maybe one or two steps removed from from bare metal. One of the values uh, or or I should say one of the the drawbacks is uh, typically the cloud architecture and and even the serverless architecture the lack of uh, access and rights. Should you have root level credentials access to design the architecture and change the architecture as you see fit. Any developers in the room? One, two, couple, three, okay. Uh, these guys want full full level access. <laughs> They're all nodding their heads. Uh, they, they want full rights over the infrastructure. They, they want to really manipulate the, the architecture as they see wish, or as they, they see fit. 
And we don't want you guys to do that. <laughs> we want you guys to just focus on, on what you do best, code, application level. Uh, and, and that's really one of the things that, that we've, we've found is uh, a hosting provider or a managed service provider uh, is going to excel much further and, and, and uh, with the help of a, a, an agency uh, to benefit the merchant, really just by, by collaborating and working together. Let us focus on the architecture and all the things that go with it. And, and then uh, you guys focus on the code base. So if you break down the components, what does that look like? Uh, and that's the same across the board whether it's bare metal hardware, all, all sort of bundled together under a single box, or um, across an array of in, uh, servers and infrastructure, uh, whether again, in a single data center or multiple data centers, uh, they're all sort of putting these pieces together so that they can function individually uh, and uh, most efficiently for, for a merchant or for, for a website. So uh, I, don't, I don't mean to pick on the developers again, but I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> uh, typically, uh, when a merchant comes to you and says, hey, I have a, a, a new idea. Can we take this function, this feature, this, this plug in this integration, and, and uh, uh, let's make it happen in a week's time or less? And, and then you sort of say, hey, that doesn't actually exist as a developer. Uh, well, I like the idea of it. Let's go ahead and, and, and implement it. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, in a lot of cases, and, and where we specialize in, in the Magento space, uh, that means brand new code integrated and injected into the architecture and infrastructure uh, on an, at least the application level. So you've, you've changed, in some ways, the DNA of that core code. And what that brings is inefficiencies. Uh, and, and what we found that uh, folks usually come to us and say, hey, the site's not running well. Uh, let's go ahead and overcompensate with the architecture, the performance, the, the caching strategy or, or tools. Uh, let's add more CPU. Let's add more RAM. Let's, let's go ahead and try and overcompensate there. Uh, and then we sort of explain the price point to the merchant. Like, no, 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 we don't want to do that because uh, you've doubled the cost all of a sudden by, by adding double the amount of CPUs to an architecture. And, and typically what we try and do is, is work with an agency to say, here's some inefficiencies in the coding. Here's what you could do to improve that. Or here's the plugin that you guys just installed that's causing poor performance because of this functionality that, that you hope to build in. Uh, that's, that's really the crux of, of where that relationship, uh, uh, where the, the, the rubber meets the road is, is how is that agency working with that hosting provider to sort of balance the the, um, the, perf the performance of the, the website itself and, and how are you able to sort of squeeze out the best performance. Uh, does anybody recognize what all these individual services are? I mean, half of them say, say Amazon. So these are all the different services that Amazon provides. If I were to go to AWS website and say, I want to spin up an infrastructure and architecture, uh, what's... Does anybody know the first place that you would look on this long list? EC2, typically. That's, that's their moneymaker. Uh, that probably generates more revenue, EC2, than all the other services. Uh, and, and if I were a merchant to sort of go to Amazon and say, I want to build my website on Amazon because Amazon is where I can get the limit, limitless growth and, and flexibility and, and all the things that... that uh, uh, I hear so much about with their cloud architecture and infrastructure. I want to go ahead and do that. I wouldn't know where to begin. And, and I'm not very technical, but I imagine that I'm, I'm maybe just as technical as a merchant uh, or a CEO of a company that's sort of for director of e-commerce that's taken over a project. And you go straight to this site and, and try and pull together all the resources and services that you know or would think that you need. And, and it's hard to tell. AWS has been around for, somebody keep me honest, I want to say a decade. Uh, 2008 is when AWS came around. Nod your head if you, you know the answer. Uh, nobody? Okay. Uh, <laughs> about 10 years now. 
and and uh, they've been doing hosting for much longer than that. But the cloud infrastructure has been around for for about ten years, I would say. And and uh, what we've noticed is that prices haven't changed. You're still paying the same prices from twenty years ago that you are today. And are you guys still using the same cell phone you had 20 years ago? Uh, technology's improved tremendously. Uh, I really enjoy uh, Corey Quinn. Uh, check him out on, on Twitter. Uh, most of his rants are on Twitter. Uh, and and uh, it's usually directed at one of the cloud service providers. And, and he makes a valid point here is that prices haven't changed. They should, and they, they need to. Uh, I, I think Amazon just announced a savings plan which sounds like a 401k savings plan that I have, but it's, it's really a, a savings plan on, on like resource consumption, uh, CPU utilization and, and those sort of things. Uh, but there, it's again, the, the data transfers and, and the rates that you're paying today are, are pretty similar. That's why uh, um, typically we'll see clients coming over from AWS that are uh, typically after a holiday season, they've just doubled their bandwidth and CPU costs from $5,000 a month to $10,000, $15,000 a month for December because of the inefficiencies in billing and, and really the troubles that you, that you see there. Same sort of motto. Uh, any Magento merchants, developers in the house? Okay. I know I keep polling you guys. I'm, I don't participate that much when I'm in the audience, so I appreciate it. But uh, we've been working with Magento for the last decade. We started working with them uh, in um, 2007. Uh, the early founders of Magento, quick snippet of, of history. Uh, Magento was started by an agency that was no more than 15 employees in Los Angeles here. Uh, and, and for those that don't know the history, they decided that maybe OS Commerce, an old product, wasn't feeding their need, their customers' needs. And they built their, their platform, uh, their new product uh, within our data centers, and we helped them sort of grow that product uh, internally and, and support them. And, and then all of a sudden it took off, and uh, we weren't entirely convinced that, that it was a the best strategy for us as a company, and it turned out to be uh, the biggest contributor to our growth and the whole community of, of folks that are, are here today. Uh, there's a lot of value in, in Magento, uh, why a merchant would, would choose Magento over other platforms. Here's, here's some of the reasons. I'm not gonna go through them individually. And then there's big commerce. Uh, there's real value in a, a SaaS uh, base solution uh, is sort of remove yourself from all of the things that you need to worry about uh, in terms of hosting infrastructure plus all the other services that, that they provide. But uh, one of the things that, that we've, we've identified is that uh, Big Commerce has sort of removed all the hosting pains entirely, mostly because they manage AWS. They've taken all the services and identified all the products that, that, need, that AWS offers and said, here's the bundled solution that we're offering. You don't even have to know anything else beyond it's hosted with us. Uh, for most merchants, that makes it easy and, and, and makes most sense. Uh, and in a lot of cases in the businesses that are even here today, that, that doesn't make so much sense and, and that there's various reasons for that. And, and I think even big commerce would admit uh, not every, every merchant is a right fit, but... Uh, I guess I won't go into detail. I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> uh, so cloud computing is here. How does it sort of, what is the, the best approach? Uh, and that's, that's kind of what we're, we're sort of learning today. Uh, everybody has their own formula, their own recipe for success. Uh, and they're all right. Everybody just seems to, one managed service provider has, has great success with a number of merchants and de, uh, developers and agencies that they work with, which could be very different than, than what we provide. No better, no worse, just different recipe. Uh, one of the most important things you should re, like really, really look into is, is expertise. Everybody says they, they, they own the market or, or they, they have the most experience or, or they, they, uh, uh, they have the largest team of experts and, and I'll make those same claims working at Nexus, but 
uh, it really comes down to when, when things go wrong, is that team jumping in? Because they will go wrong, whether you're on a big cloud service provider or, or working with a company like, like Nexus or, or any number of the, the companies in the hosting space. Uh, it's not a matter of if something goes wrong, it's a matter of when. Uh, and, and don't kid yourself that 100% uh, uptime is, is something that uh, a company can deliver. It really comes down to the, the, the support that you get in those times of crisis. So imagine if things were a little different and, and, and you can take all the services that, that the AWS has to offer and sort of bundle it into a nice package. Uh, engineered for simplicity, tools for growth, and what do you know? I have a demo. Uh, so for the developers that are out there, there's no sound, no worries. Uh, so for the developers that are out there, it's really a matter of how do you do code deployment? How can I quickly take my instance of Magento that I've been working on, in this case Magento, uh, and I've been working on and deploy it in the cloud super fast and make sure it's working and operational just the same way. One of the most common things that we see is like, hey, it's super fast here, but then I deploy over here and it's running really slow. Why is that? Uh, and, and we have various reasons and, and things that we can look into, but uh, when it comes to code deployment, a lot of times you're, you're having to uh, adopt a process or strategy that you're not familiar with, but uh, uh, you're willing to learn and willing to work with, but there, there's quite a learning curve. And, and in this case, we're sort of open and saying, hey, pick your region, pick your, pick your application. We've we built our, our own recipe in, in cloud uh, architecture with complete with some caching tools and everything that you need and you're good to go. Uh, a lot of times that it's as simple as that. You can start right away and start development. And, and typically, when you know you're on an architecture that's been designed for your specific application as a developer, it's amazing because you can just start going to work building the website. You don't have to wor worry about the architecture, how it's interacting with the application. One of the cool features with Magento is the latest integration with Elasticsearch. Uh, if you're typically a industrial manufacturing type business and your your product catalog is, is pretty massive, and what would we consider massive? I don't know, 10,000, 50,000, a million products. And I'm talking about very small, minuscule products for the parts or car parts industry or some other industry. How do you sort of integrate this search feature, which is typically done through MySQL database search, uh, and improve upon that? Well, Magento did it with Elasticsearch because there, there was a great deal of success run there. But how do you deploy that as a developer today? How do you go in and, and really identify, here's the specific uh, database that I want to search and connect it with the Magento admin panel in the back end? Uh, as a developer, you don't want to have to sort of architect that. Uh, as a developer, in a lot of cases, you don't know how to architect that because that's within the backend database uh, architecture, uh, where your focus is definitely on the front end application. Uh, we've sort of made that that easy and and help folks understand that uh, that it doesn't have to be that complicated. We can oversimplify uh, the process for, for merchants and developers and uh, help them understand that uh, working with a uh, finely tuned architecture like this, and when I say uh, architecture, this is really the core of it. When, when you're a merchant or developer, you're interacting with the, the architecture through a panel like this or, or a, uh, a portal. <clears throat> and then last one. And I promise it's, it's not going to go much longer after this. Uh, uh, as a developer, one of the best things that, that you will do for a merchant is set up multiple environments. You'll set up, uh, you'll have your live environment, obviously. And if you're making changes to the live environment, you're doing it wrong. Don't. 
uh, you'll have a staging, you'll have um, a dev one, dev two, you'll have multiple iterations of a single site. And that's really difficult to go through as a developer and take all of those files and all of that information and replicate it over and over and over again. Uh, we were doing it for a long time manually and charging 25 bucks to do it. it made no sense to charge and it made no sense to, to do it manually. Mostly because it's all development work. It's all having to replicate files over and, and recreating it in another uh, environment. And, and what we've done is, is allowed you to do it through a click of a button, uh, which is, is, is pretty hard to find. I don't know if anybody's, any other provider's doing that today. That's one of the, the secrets in, in our success is allowing you to sort of recreate over and over again. Um, and then on top of that, how are you to remain PCI compliant? How are you to uh, secure client information if you're, you're, you have um, customer information that you're replicating over and over again? What we've allowed you to do is uh, anonymize that information with the click of a button. Uh, and that's really helped to uh, allow multiple developers to sort of work in a single space or a single staging environment, but yet keeping client and customer the merchant's customer information, uh, not so exposed. And then we talked about pricing model. Uh, if you can make it easy, and we, we think we have uh, uh, through something that you can understand, what we found is that the number of concurrent users, uh, which everybody looks at, and that's the number of active uh, PHP FPM instances that are hitting the architecture and infrastructure, that is actually what's indicating the, the traffic numbers. And that's somebody actively clicking through and the number of people that are actively clicking through continues to grow and grow and grow and grow. Uh, that's exactly what, what you're, you're looking at when it comes to expansion. So we've narrowed that down and removed that from uh, the web application server. In the past, what it was, if you needed more more PHP instances to grow your traffic, you're adding another node. And in fact, Magento used to offer licensing based on the number of nodes that you had. Made no sense then, it still makes no sense today. Uh, and then additional caching tools, whether it's Varnish, which is a real pain. Uh, if anybody, any developers have ever implemented Varnish, I see somebody nodding their head. Uh, it's, it's not easy. And, and it's not the fix to the inefficiencies in coding. But, uh, it is uh, a handy tool uh, when you are sort of building the varnish caching strategy, which is now natively built into Magento. But what we've chosen to do is build our own ded dedicated container for varnish and de dedicated container for Nginx caching uh, so that you can sort of grow that, those caching resources in individual environments. What you can do as a, a developer is sort of turn that on copy a piece of code, plug that into your, your Magento admin panel, and then just let it work. And that's part of your, the base foundation of your performance strategy. Uh, and then don't go in and expect to like click it and boom, my site's running quicker. Uh, and again, with all this technology, it's important to have a team that supports you, whether you know online or, or on the phone, they're available 24 hours a day. No need to belabor that. Those are guys just staring at screens. Actual employees just staring at screens. Some of the clients we work with in the past and, and today, present. Um, I think that's it. Thanks. I gave you guys back 10 minutes. We're going to start early. Uh, the sign of a good presentation is a question. So I need one. Somebody just throw something out there. Or I'm going to go home crying. <laughs> Thank you. Serverless, so, so I th maybe I didn't hit on it well enough, but serverless is really the combination of, uh, well, he already asked it. He just wanted me to know what, what how do I define serverless architecture? Uh, and it's really no different than the cloud architecture, but it's really the combination of uh, specific cat, um, applications, server-side applications, targeting uh, specific uh, uh, functionalities for the website married with the cloud architecture. It's, it's not more complicated than that, if, if, if you understood what I was saying. <laughs> okay, thanks for your time, everybody. I'll be hanging out today.
love to talk to you more.